Hey, this is Jesse here. I'm going to give a quick tour of uh, the Froling wood boiler. Uh, I have to make a fire with it. You can see that the uh, thermal storage tank is uh, 143 degrees, and we want a little bit hotter water uh, just to provide heat to the baseboard heaters. So I usually fire this a uh, couple times a day this time of year here in Maine. And uh, let's get started. This is the thermal storage tank. 650 gallons. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. And uh, needs to be pretty big. And you can see the coils entering it over here where you've got uh, the inputs for the solar hot water right here. And uh, the solar collectors, let's see, they're at 77 degrees. They're mostly covered in snow. So that'll help melt the snow, but they're uh, not putting out any heat right now. But you can get heat out of these even in January, Feb, when uh, they're free of snow and there's sun shining. And then you can also see uh, coils for the wood boiler for it to distribute uh, hot water into the thermal storage tank. Left hand, uh, I opened the wood boiler. The fan kicked on automatically. You can see below you have the gasification chamber. You have the lighting door, and this is the loading door that's open. So you can see also there's a computer control unit at the top. It tells you current flue gas temps, only 33 Celsius. Haven't fired this since uh, early last night. And I have an arm full of cordwood here that I'm going to start dumping in. So I'm going to just put this on my workbench to stop it up. I'm going to load this up now. It's going to be a little bit of wood. Hopefully it's dry. Uh, I've been keeping it under my deck, but still it's a little bit wet before. And uh, I'll just show you, this is where I'm keeping the wood outside. So I made a dent into it already, there were piles right here. And uh, I'm thinking this might take me through at least part of February, hopefully. Alright, I'm going to bring some more wood, keep loading. I think this will take logs up to 24 inches. Most of my wood is cut to 16, so it's a little small. One trick that I learned is actually to uh, use uh, bio bricks, which are pressed sawdust products from local uh, wood mills, and those are actually uh, really low moisture content, like 6%, I want to say, or maybe even a little lower. And uh, they actually burn great when you mix them with cordwood um, if your wood's a little bit wet. You, kind of give it an extra boost. So uh, I can still keep going. This loading chamber takes quite a bit of wood. So we'll keep going with that. So there are a couple ways to light this thing. Uh, I actually uh, take a fast approach. Got a little propane left in this. I use a propane torch. You can torch the coals uh, and those will heat up and start a fire. It's usually good to put a little bit of kindling or um, some paper in there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both. You can see actually, there are some live coals from last night, which is great. So we have that going for us already. And so I'll get some paper. I'm going to close the loading door. I'm just using some uh, brown construction paper. We don't have any newspaper subscription, so I just get that. A large roll of it. It's about 10 bucks at Home Depot, and it lasts a month or so. The other great fire starting material, uh, untreated cedar shingles are great. You can use those as thin I use them in the yodel upstairs. Alright, All right, so I got uh, some paper in there. And let's kick this on. A little overkill, but it works. That's it. So, ignition, closer, so you can see what's going on. You can see the lighting door is going. The fan, it's uh, on. It's actually at 100% when the door is open, when the main red door. So here we go with our lighting door. It is definitely burning. And the flue gas temperature is going to start to increase. I can actually monitor that live. So you can see it went up from 43, it's at 46. It's going to keep increasing, 47. And you can see there's a little icon under uh, where it says ID fan on. 
Let's see if with the reflection. It's got little bars there. That actually tells you your thermal storage tank has about uh, half the BTUs that it can hold. So it says we could run about half a load. I loaded it all the way full because the wood's a little wet. Uh, I might have even overloaded it uh, for this clump. Right now it's about a little bit above freezing outside. It's a little warm, so I, I may actually end up running this in idle mode if it uh, keeps cranking and the wood is drier than I thought it was. So we're going to let that increase for a little bit. You can see that that fan is really pulling quite a bit of draft in there. And that because our house is fairly tight, I've had to... Uh, I, I'm leaving the door open right now. It's also not super cold. And that way we're not going to backdraft through our chimney upstairs. So we'll let this go. I don't know if this viewing port down here on the gasification chamber is all mucked up. But you can start to see this is the gasification chamber. And if it'll focus on it. There's a flame shooting in there. There's a secondary air valve that's actually injecting a little bit of air through this as it goes through the slot, and that's going to cause the uh, wood gas to gasify, or not to gasify, but to um, to combust more cleanly. So that's why you call it a gasification boiler, or at least I may have explained it wrong, but you get the drift. It actually it burns quite a bit cleaner when you inject have that secondary air injection, and. Uh, What's neat about this boiler is you can actually uh, adjust the air settings, the, uh, the ox it's got an oxygen sensor in the flue, so you, you can actually, uh, like, kind of like a carburetor, adjust the parameters depending on how you want it to burn. Most of the time you shouldn't mess with that stuff, but there's actually a way to get in and bypass the settings, um, the regular factory settings. But let's see, with the, your regular interface here, it tells you storage tank temps, tells you about the boiler, we can go to system, current values, boiler temp, when flue gas, ID fan control, it's running at 100%, the door is open, the primary air valve or damper is open, 99%, residual oxygen content, 17.2%, you can see this is going to change and the ideal is going to be about 8 to 8.1%, uh, that's going to give you your cleanest burn, so the boiler is going to try to uh, maintain, get to that point and maintain it. Secondary right now is zero because the door is open, but if you got this to where uh, the residual oxygen was below eight, it would actually open the secondary damper. So service hours, 701, and service hours in slumber, 77. That's, I think, a little high, but that shows the uh, times when uh, it's been firing and it actually had to close those uh, dampers way down and, and idle the fan because the boiler was actually getting too hot or we didn't need that extra heat. And it's got all kinds of safety mechanisms built in as well. So we'll just let this go with flue gas temp. And I'm going to let the flue gas temp, they say you can close it at 135. I'm going to let this uh, get up a little bit higher. I just have a experience with it and uh, it tends to burn a little better if I let it get up to you know 170 or so. So we'll let that increase. It's been running for a few minutes. And uh, when I'm ready, I'll just end up closing the loading door, shutting the main red door, and that'll be a burn. Thanks for watching uh, Froling Wood Boiler uh, Ignition, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right.